Okay, great. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming to today's meeting. Um, this person's tech person of the week is Elizabeth Feinler. She developed the original search engine before like Google um, was invented. Um, it was called the National Information Center in California. Um, it was the first place to publish resources and like directories on the internet. Um, it was like the original kind of white pages. If you remember getting those like thick books with just like all different stores and like information. And then she also um, developed the domain naming scheme. Sorry, my lighting is really weird. Um, I only have one light in like the corner of my room. <laughs> but she also developed the um, naming scheme of like .com, edu, gov, net. So she really created like the original search engine, which is really cool. I don't think I can control your screen. Oh, can I? I don't know. Okay, and yeah, we have Jeffrey from Datadog here and we're gonna be doing kind of a workshop on how to work from home and coping with like the virtual experience that we're all living in right now. Yeah, hey, how are you doing? Um, can I share screen, by the way, or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you should be able to let me just stop sharing mine. Okay, cool. Uh, I think I, I might need access somehow. Yeah, I, I can't. Okay. All right, let me, okay. You, do, can you not do it now? You should be good now, sorry. Oh, yep, okay, all good. Um, one second. Can everyone see this screen? Yep, I can. Great, okay, cool. Well, I feel like it takes up my entire page all the time uh, when I use slides, so like I can't see anything. Um, cool, um, but yeah, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming out, I guess, to this particular session. Um, and we're doing it virtual edition this, virtual edition this time. Um, so I guess like, first of all, probably introductions would be great. So um, my name is Jeffrey. I'm one of the university recruiters here um, at Datadog, uh, specifically focusing on um, most of our kind of like campus partnerships. So, um, you know, for example, like Northeastern, I've kind of worked with uh, a lot and uh, been with, you know, done, I think like two season, two, three seasons of like in, um, events with. Uh, multi, multi right now, so that's really awesome. Um, and I have Mustafa here who is going to introduce himself. <laughs> yeah, hello everyone. My name is Mustafa. I'm a software intern on the web integrations team. I'm a rising senior from UT Austin and I'm based in Houston right now, uh, working with the team in New York. And yeah, I, I look a little different from my picture, but that's just the, the quarantine vibes. And uh, yeah, excuse me for that, but. That's like me. we all look crazy. <laughs> I, <agree laughs> <with you. laughs> I don't think anybody's judging at this point. <laughs> Everyone's yeah, like, I, I gotta find my barber somewhere. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, like you want like like dates and stuff, and I'm like, that's not happening anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I cut my hair for the first time by myself, like during quarantine. Ooh, <laughs> I don't trust myself, but uh, I like let my roommate cut it once. Um, it was it was okay. It wasn't bad for a first timer, um, but I definitely had to go to the barbershop right after. I was like, okay, I, I need to I need to go to the to fix it. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, so I think what would help probably is uh, so what is Datadog, right? I'm sure that like some of you kind of might know, but some of you might not. So let's kind of get everyone on the same page. So um, Datadog is the kind of essential monitoring platform for uh, cloud applications. So what we do here is we bring together data from, from servers, containers, databases, and third-party services to make your stack entirely observable. So these capabilities really help DevOps teams avoid downtime, resolve performance issues, uh, and ensure customers are getting the best user experience while they're, um, you know, whatever their sites are up, whatever apps are up, we wanna make sure that we're kind of doing it all. So um, I think to kind of get everyone in a little more, a little bit more of a perspective of what Datadog really does. So, uh, you know, we're, we're almost at like Black Friday slash Cyber Monday, right? So things are gonna be on sale and we're gonna be kind of prowling through the websites to 
deeply buy all the things that we can get. Um, and so imagine you are a large scale retailer, right? Like you are completely overwhelmed by Cyber Monday sales and your website is down. You know, like the first, one of the examples we had, one of our companies that had used us, for example, um, after installing Datadog, they were able to get their website back up and running um, after 30 minutes after crashing by just handling too much load from all the people that were signing up for accounts, checking out. Um, this kind of just shows exactly, you know, what we kind of handle. You're able to pinpoint exactly the issues, um, exactly kind of what you're like looking for. So, um, and then kind of like another example is, uh, I guess, uh, I would love to ask all of you, um, has anyone here coded before? If you have just like react. <laughs> dope, dope. Okay. Um, have you ever coded something with like, whether that's like a group project or yourself, have you ever coded something that's over like a thousand lines of code, right? Hundreds, thousands of lines of code. Yeah. Okay, I see the lingering kind of ticks, so I think we're going to say yes. Um, and have you ever run the code and there's a bug somewhere and you just absolutely have no clue where it is and you spend painstaking hours trying to find it and it was just like, oh, I forgot the, uh, my apostrophe somewhere uh, or I did double quotations by accident. Well, um, we're actually, uh, you know, we're able to, Datadog's able to help you find those those problems, right? Like, especially imagining in such a large scale company where human errors are everywhere, right? Like, I think it's safe to say that everyone's going to screw up something at some point, they're going to type something wrong, or something's going to pop up. Well, you know, one of the one of our products actually is able to help you with that. And I think uh, we're actually looking to even get to a stage where you can actually see the code of where exactly all the problems are and pinpoint exactly where it is and how to fix that. So uh, we're working on a lot of things that ultimately will really help um, engineers in their time, like you're not spending time just doing bug fixes, but really on the important stuff, actually like building things and working on the, um, the real issues that you just want to like do at wh whatever company or whatever role that you're working on. Um, Mustafa, do you have anything to add from the engineering side? Yeah, the, the visibility is something that's really cool. Um, just cause we do this thing called dog fooding, which is also kind of a pun, but like within Datadog, we actually use Datadog a lot. So we get to kind of like live test our own features while we're also working on them. Um, and just through that, it's like just learning how to use the product itself is a great learning experience. It, it's like a real tech skill that a lot of companies are heavily sought after. Um, so yeah, it's just like an all around great skill to have. And it, it helps you just gain way more visibility on on any projects you're working on. Awesome, cool. So what has it been like with Datadog during COVID? I feel like a lot of people are trying to figure out like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, kind of like a peer into kind of, you know, what we've been doing um, here at Datadog in terms of, um, you know, what's been going on, I guess. So uh, to give you a little bit of clue for all of our 2020 kind of start dates, so all of our interns and all of our new grads, um, we've honored every single start date so far. Um, so every single intern and new grads that was supposed to start with us have started with us um, and are continuing to start with us. I think if anything, during, uh, during these times of like COVID and remoteness uh, has made a lot of companies realize the importance of the cloud really and understanding why a solution like ours is really essential in a more kind of virtually connected work environment. You know, we've had, I think the... Uh, there a lot of people are starting to realize that and um, you know making sure that you know how do we kind of keep everything everyone in check right I think you used to be able to just turn to your neighbor and try to fix things but now you got to ping them you got to figure things out like things may pop up everyone has crazy schedules um, so we want to make sure that everyone is on the same page um, with everything that's going on uh, kind of within the company itself uh, we've had a tremendous support uh, we had tremendous support from our leadership as well uh, to support our work from home like setup, like being more mindful of time zones, responsibilities and other engagements throughout the day, right? I think that, you know, uh, you know, people now will have like kids they've got to take care of, Wi-Fi issues. Uh, one, of, one of the engineers that I was working with was like, oh, I'm in New Orleans and we have a tornado now, so uh, can't work for a few days. So it's like things like that, that I think um, being more mindful of, I think we've 
previously at Datadog, we have like a, before kind of COVID, we had a little bit of a remote work culture in the sense that um, I think uh, about like 10 to 20% of our workforce was like remote. And uh, we actually have, obviously we have a strong engineering presence within New York, but also within Paris as well. And so that in itself is already kind of having that remote um, atmosphere. And so learning to how to work across not just different time zones, but also different cultures uh, really just shows kind of how um, we can bridge the gap between like from making a local company to like a global company uh, work, which is great. Um, so I think talking a little bit about virtual and uh, in this whole like atmosphere of virtualness, uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you probably have done somewhat of like a virtual interview at some point in your life, whether that's before COVID, during COVID, it's uh, whether that's like a phone interview or just like a video interview, um, that I'm sure that all of you have had some sort of conversation with someone. Um, I think, um, based on my eyes, I think the biggest difference really is that you lose uh, the kind of between the two virtual versus in person, you really lose the, the body language and the kind of direct eye contact, I'd say, with the particular like interviewer or the person. Um, so I think that that's something that is like, you're trying to work on right you, you want to be able to you won't be able to have that but okay let's see what you can have right in this environment so um i think things that really do help you stand out kind of behind a computer or behind a phone or whatever um one is really communicate right always letting them know always letting your interviewers know what you're thinking through um interviewers can only help you um if or recruiters can only help you if they know what's going on uh, i'm not sure if you know this but uh interviewers can't read your mind so, you know, they definitely want to, if you have something that you want to say or have a question, definitely ask them. Uh, I don't think I've known any interviewer that is not like, you know, we're obviously there, to, they're obviously there to interview you, but they're not there to like catch you uh, in any way. They want to help you kind of get through it. Uh, they want to help you get through the interview. If you're struggling with something, um, asking those questions, being able to kind of let them know like what you're curious about, what you're like worried about or try trying to figure that out just so that that body language that maybe uh, an interview might see in person, um, they'd be able to see kind of as you're talking to them and being able to do that. Um, and I think something to think about moving into the future, right? I think a lot of us have tried to adapt into this like weird remote environment, whether that's with school, with recruiting, with interviews, uh, with kind of like even this uh, with multi. And I think um, within specifically just recruiting, you know, with with the future of recruiting and kind of what it looks like. And I, I anticipate not just like for this year, but also like into next year is that there will be a shift in the way that uh, a lot of companies do recruiting, uh, a lot of students as well, how they want to do recruit, like no more kind of, or less so uh, shaking sweaty hands at like a career fair, you know, like hopping in one room with like 10 people like really tight and just like talking through and all that i think that that's it's going to be a long time before we can actually do something like that so you know also shifting then being able to for you to shift your mindset just as much as um we're we're trying to shift our mindset of how we're recruiting uh you know it's the same way for all students uh we want to make sure that i feel a few things that uh definitely come to mind when especially this year when we're kind of recruiting candidates here at Datadog, uh, really understanding your online presence, right? So, uh, you know, show me kind of like your, like make sure that your LinkedIn, your GitHub, your personal projects, basically anything that really points to your name, make sure that it's up to date. Like I've definitely seen some websites that were like, oh, uh, hi, this is my first website from 2015. Um, and you're just like, and we look at it and we're like, oh, okay, clearly like, you know, they haven't touched it in a while. Um, so really make sure that you're really getting those up to date just because now we have a lot less data points in terms of in-person or meeting, you know, engineers meeting you in person, being able to kind of vouch for you. Um, it's really hard for us to be able to do that without kind of seeing your whole profile, right? And you never know, right? Like someone is gonna bound to, to um, click on it at some point if you put it up. Um, so really make sure that, uh, you know, you're really getting your online presence up. Uh, I think something else as well is uh, really being able to do your research, right? Do your research on the companies, do your research on opportunities, just because like, I think everyone, 
especially in school, you're usually like, okay, great. I can just go to a career fair. Uh, and then I can just look at all the companies that are hiring and then just talk to this, this, this. And then like, I can probably get an opportunity here. Right. Well, obviously like that's going to look a little different. Um, some companies might not even do career fairs just because of the virtual environment. Uh, a lot of it has changed. So really kind of, um, taking the extra step as much as, uh, recruiting teams are taking the extra step to kind of reach out to candidates. Uh, you want to be able to also take that extra step to be able to reach out to the companies that you want to reach out to, like uh, apply for the ones that you're very interested in, be able to, um, you know, go to those virtual events if there are any, but make sure you don't exhaust yourself just because, you know, we all know like Zoom fatigue is real. Like I'm sure that all of you are in classes all day being like reading what like, uh, like text and then doing like exams and then still on video constantly like at your computer. So I'm sure that uh, you're also just uh, tired as well. So make sure you're doing the necessary work, but also for you to taking the necessary breaks to do so too. Um, but I will. Okay, cool. So um, let's. We had a question. From, oh yeah. Uh, so Matt, she said, is there anything that has made someone stand out to you in this virtual format? Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, a lot of, so I will say like, I have had people who have made like weird little like games and things now to in their resumes, just because I think, er <laughs> so this is a little weird, but someone on their resume made a game, like a quick game that was like, you had to, you had to just type in, it was like a really basic HTML, CSS, like website or whatever. But basically at the end of the website, they, uh, it spelled out like, give this person a job, an internship. Um, so I think like little things like that really like pique someone's interest, especially because like all we have is kind of to look through profiles. So really fun things like that, like can really change the way that uh, people look at your profile. Um, I think, um, you know, you can always do the reach outs in terms of the LinkedIn's and all the messages, but I will say that a lot of people are going to be doing that. Like I receive a lot of those, I probably receive at least 20 to 30 every single day. Um, and I can't respond to every single one. I am one person. <laughs> um, and you know, just keeping in mind that at the same time, like you might not necessarily get a response and that's okay. Right. Like, you know, I think I've had people who have sent me like mails and then followed up with me a third time and I'm like, Oh wow. Okay. How did I not notice this just because it was drowned in my inbox. So maybe you'll get, you will get a response, but just being able to, understand that sometimes you won't get a response and that's okay, right? The worst answer is no answer, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but just know that, you know, I think uh, everyone is kind of doing their best to try and get you get, I guess, like a response. Also, yeah, if you have any questions, I can't see anything right now uh, because of the presentation. So I can't see the chat. Uh, so just let me know if you have a question, just let me know. Um, uh, but yeah, I, any other questions, I guess, like about like recruiting in general, like in this like weird landscape? I have a quick question. Yeah, go for it. Um, have interviews been awkward online? Mm. And then how do you like tackle that? Yeah, uh, so I think, so for our intern interviews, it's all been remote since the beginning we don't do like in-person interviews uh but i will say like for full-time interviews you obviously do kind of miss that like on-site being able to kind of like meet people i think um it's always going to be a little awkward right like it's always going to be like oh let's like introduce yourself like there's no like handshakes or anything you're just kind of like <laughs> uh, hey what's up um and i feel like it's one of those things where uh you both as long as you both kind of understand that uh, it's it's going to be awkward it's going to be okay like um just having for yourself, like at the very least, like questions and things that you want to take, uh, talk about. I think, um, what I've had people ask me as well is, um, if they say do a full day of onsite, say it's from like one to four and it's like three hours of onsites and you're just like, you're just like really tired. I've usually had people ask me like, Hey, is it possible to take a, like a 15 or 30 minute break in between so that you can reset so that you're not just like constantly on the screen. Um, I would say that that's definitely like a, a big plus to help you not feel like you're constantly repeating yourself, saying the same thing to the same person uh, or like different people uh, and just being able to kind of reset your mind frame. Um, I also, I think the one thing as well that really helps being kind of like remote is to have notes as well. Like just to be like, uh, I have sometimes like, uh, I have like a, like post just saying like, uh, you know, 
make sure you cover this or like, don't be awkward. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it's like little things like that, just to, as a reminder. So as you're like looking at it, um, you can feel a little more secure about like what you're trying to talk about. Um, I think that that's actually like a benefit of doing like um, completely remote interviews, uh, but hot take, so. It's a good take, thank you. For sure. Any other questions? Uh, Denise says, if a recruiter at a company you're interested in doesn't respond to a LinkedIn message, how would you try to best express your interest without spamming the recruiter slash multiple recruiters? Yeah, um, I think what I, what I mentioned about like, it's okay to follow up, right? Like once or twice, but um, if you're constantly sending a message and um, you know, I think that they're, they're just not receiving it. Maybe they just, it's, it's a wrong email or they're just like not checking it. Um, and at that point it's just kind of like, okay, like let's, we've exhausted that kind of side of, um, of kind of engagement with that recruiter. So why don't we kind of explore a different part, right? Like being able to, like, if you're really, are interested in that particular company, definitely check out like all the events that they do have, right? Like what is it online that they have? Um, when you're, I think, um, making sure that like when you do say like you're interested in a particular company, you're like, uh, you're submitting the application. Um, that's your kind of one gateway that for sure that someone like will be able to look at that. So making sure that like, if you're just, if you're actually like applying for a job, making sure like they're probably, most companies when you have that application page will usually ask like, why are you interested in X company or like anything else we should know about you in your application. Um, sometimes a cover letter, but I will say like, I personally think that like sometimes cover letters aren't read all the time. So I think that resumes should be like the first thing that uh, should be there. It shouldn't just be your cover letter that kind of, it should be just a supplementary thing. Um, but definitely like, uh, I will say at the very least, like on our recruiting team, we love to read the kind of like, why are you interested or anything we should know about you just because at the very least, like we'll know then like, okay, this person actually put the time in to uh, type up the responses or, uh, you know, they clearly are very motivated to be here. Uh, and just know that we do read that, right? Like, so putting a little bit more time into those little passive parts of the application uh, will ultimately help you with that. Um, but I think, uh, sometimes it's just waiting and hoping. Uh, I've definitely had people who just like, honestly, like gave up hope. They were like, oh my God, I never thought that you were going to reach out to me. And then we ended up reaching out, uh, and then getting the opportunity together. So, uh, sometimes it's just a waiting game. Um, and that's just how it is. I hope this answers your question. I, I didn't want to leave it on a sad note, but. <laughs> oh yeah, I think. I think there's um, oops, another question. Without in-person networking events, what are ways you suggest meeting with recruiters and having that first conversation with them? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think like as you're like, especially like these reach outs that you do, like if you end up um, reaching out, say like you send them a message on their email or you know, as you're doing like a LinkedIn request or anything like that, I, again, make it as individual as possible, right? Like making sure that the response that you're trying to look for, um, you know, instead of just saying like, hey, I'm a student at this, I'm interested in this, uh, what opportunities do you have for me? Instead of that, asking very specific questions, right? Like saying like, hey, um, you know, I was able to attend this or I saw this. Um, I actually had a question about like this particular like process or I'm particularly interested about this part of the Datadog product or like whatever product that your company that you're interested in, um, you know, do you have like uh, 10 or 15 minutes to just like chat really quickly? Um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions um, instead of trying to, I think the worst thing is when someone, when an intern or sorry, when a candidate is like, oh, hey, here's me, what do you have for me? Instead of that, like asking like, asking them like, hey, I actually have specific questions that I wanna ask that I would love to talk to someone about. Um, you know, that makes it more, it makes the conversation more viable to like talk to. It makes the questions like more, um, it, it makes the conversation more engaging, if you know what I mean. Um, I think that that's the biggest thing is that we, like as much as we can have all these conversations, if we wanna make sure that these conversations are actually fruitful instead of like a, hey, could, do you have an opportunity for me? Like. So can you hire me? You know what I mean? Like, uh, we want to make sure that it's a, it's a conversation that um, keeps going. Um, cool. 
Awesome. Okay, let's move on a little bit. I'll we'll do like questions again um, at the end as well. So, um, but I really wanted to have actually Mustafa talk about his remote internship experience, uh, just because he started remote. He's been remote. He's still here. We love to see it. Um, but yeah, take it away. Yeah, I'd love to. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm on the web integrations team. And if you're not familiar, we kind of own all of the integrations that uh, Datadog works with. So, you know, a lot of companies that have these other services that they want to integrate Datadog with. It could be something like Slack or PagerDuty or ServiceNow, if you're familiar with those. So we ca- we kind of manage all of those and we, we interact with those companies as well. So um, just an example of kind of the work that an intern can do, I like to mention my, my kind of my first project. Um, like I got to have a lot of high impact early on. It was a project for this company called Big Panda, which was we were developing an integration and we wanted to release it um, for Datadog's biggest uh, conference, which is called Dash. And it was kind of a really high or very big responsibility that I got to really take ownership of. And I was really uh, I was kind of the, the figurehead of the, of the project and I got to work with the other company's uh, head of engineering in order to make this integration. And it was really cool because Big Panda was actually like one of our biggest sponsors of the conference. And it, it was really nice to kind of have that that ownership early on and to have that trust from the manager. I felt like Datadog is definitely not a place that's going to give you something that's like just not useful or no one wants to no one really cares if it finishes or not. The projects really have tangible results and they really care that you're working on something that leads to you growing and leads to you creating something of value. Um, I've definitely felt like early on or, you know, like I originally signed my offer last year before anyone really knew about virtual and things kind of like happened last minute. So like I, I kind of had those, you know, anxieties early on on what, you know, virtual experience was like or what onboarding was like. but I really couldn't have been more pleased with what the process was. I like the teams have all been very supportive. Like there's tons of channels of just people that get to, you just throw in whatever question you have, even if you feel it's like really dumb and, and everyone's just willing to reach out to you. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it kind of works both ways in terms of the team interaction. You have to, you know, show that you're really involved, but they also invested in you as well. So um, you know, getting that type of feedback from the team and from your managers and other people you work with in the company is very rewarding whenever you're able to contribute to something that, that's very useful. Um, yeah, and I, I got to work on that really cool project. And ever since then, I've just been working on really even more impactful things. Um, I got to work on our Slack integration, which was released at the Slack uh, convention uh, just a few weeks ago. And that's something that we actually use within the company. Like I mentioned earlier, because we use Datadoc so much, the features that you release end up being what like everyone you know uses every day. So like you kind of get that live feedback all the time. And you know, you could just tell people like, oh yeah, I'm the guy that, that made this thing. So that's something that I think is really cool and very unique to the to the work that we do. Um yeah, and it's really cool just within the integrations specifically, like you you really get to gain scope on just how big Datadog is becoming. Um, I don't know if I can really say, but like Datadog is acquiring just more and more like high profile customers. And it, it's really cool that you kind of get to communicate with them and, and hear about their engineering problems and how Datadog is becoming more of a solution for what they have to do. So, um, yeah. Uh, you guys have any questions i could definitely speak on those i think there was a question how do you go about connecting with and learning with your coworkers? like do you make use of slack like zoom like what yeah do you, what do you do yeah so um i feel very lucky um like my team has a really great culture i'm sure a lot of teams kind of follow similar culture where um, they're very forward about making sure that people are communicating constantly, that there's always some open avenue for just like, we have like a channel for our, like our pearl requests and our code, but we also have a channel just for kind of like just normal talk and just asking random questions. Um, You know, we have the daily standup 
we also like set up time for social hours and just like kind of times to just blow off steam and just talk um and yeah all the time we're like messaging each other and as soon as we ever feel like oh this is kind of becoming too much for a slack we just hop onto a zoom call and then um just chat from there um uh yeah so i feel like most teams kind of follow that similar culture um another thing within datadog is there's a lot of team to team collaboration so although i'm i'm on this team i'm actually working with many different teams at once and as you start to do that you get to join other team standups and and that's kind of how you get to branch out um i see the questions here so uh the languages oh yeah another really cool thing is that um they definitely let you explore so i kind of came in kind of wanting to prioritize just like backend work, but um, I got to pretty much touch all parts of the stack. I primarily work with Python, Go, um, React, uh, which is JavaScript. And on top of that, you get to really develop just the other parts of development that you don't really think about, which is just like managing your own deployments, like databases, or work within Postgres, writing uh, to Kafka topics. Like these are these are all things I really didn't know uh, coming into the internship, I kind of feel like the school, like, like education or college kind of gives you this like foundation, but you don't really know those like real world application skills until you get to go to a place that's doing them at scale. And I think, uh, they definitely let you explore that and they, they give you that, that room to learn as well. Um, uh, did you, yeah, the experience like I had with them was like, kind of just for like school projects, just like, kind of like little dinky side projects. It was never really something that that you feel was was at scale of what you see here. And I think um, once you get to really have that experience, it, it definitely opens your eyes to just so many more problems and so many more ways to, to learn about those uh, solutions. Um, yeah, onboarding, uh, was onboarding difficult remotely? Um, yeah, it definitely has its uh, caveats like, there are certain times where you feel like, especially, you know, if you're a super driven person, you might just feel like, wow, I'm, I'm really taking this too slow, or I just feel like things aren't working. Um, I also just like early on, I was having like internet issues and I would like cut out from Zoom meetings and like, like there were certain times where you kind of have your doubts. And then you also, you just like, don't really know like how to gauge your skill, right? Because, you know, normally you would be talking with interns every day, you'll be, you'll be seeing what they're doing and you guys kind of just like, you know, kind of just gauge with each other like, oh, like, you know, I'm kind of on pace with everyone else. But when it's remotely, you don't really see like how well you're doing. But I think it, that's just something you like, the team will really help you out with that. And if you just express openly that, like you just throw out whatever questions you have and you never kind of hold back on your questions and you just um, embrace that, that, position of learning that you have and um after that i think like it's really the hardest part is building the momentum and then i think like after the third or fourth week you really start to know how to like oh i, I can just like find the wiki page for this or i know the exact person to, to slack for this so yeah it, there were some caveats some certain caveats but um overall datadog is very remote friendly and they have a lot of things in place already to uh, to kind of streamline that process. Um, any more questions? Oh, yeah, we also had some cool remote events. Um, I actually didn't attend this one, but Jeffrey had like a pizza cooking class. I heard was a really, really beneficial class. Um, yeah, we've kind of done some. We've done some like Among Us games just within the interns. Uh, so like. Like there are ways, I'm sure just like, as you guys have found ways to, to go about it with your friends, like the interns and the recruiting team as well. We, we found kind of fun ways to, to make do. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting because I think we were trying out so many different things uh, like throughout the year, just like what events worked, what didn't. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, we did a pizza making class and uh, I actually, huh, I was the instructor. Fun fact, uh, I'm actually a, I graduated with a nutrition degree, so I actually am, I guess, like certified, not really. Um, but yeah, so 
it was it was really it was actually like um it was really cool because all I did was like okay here I just sent all the people attending uh like here's a list of ingredients uh go get them at your local grocery store and then like reimburse it and then we'll come together and then do the recipe together um and then kind of like bake it as we go uh it was really fun just like seeing everyone's pizza um and then like kind of like I was like do whatever you want uh we were like you know whatever makes the most sense and stuff so uh that was really fun but a few things we've done like you know we have um uh remote Q&As with all of our different parts of the organization so whether that's like conversations uh you know conversations with our CEO CTO like product designers or what have you or even kind of uh DNI fire like diversity and inclusion kind of fireside chats uh that we've been doing starting this year as well I think more so than ever, uh, especially, you know, with everything that's kind of going on with uh, the summer, like Black Lives Matter and everything, uh, we wanted to create spaces for um, all of our um, interns to, like, talk with each other, talk with us, talk with some of our engineers, kind of spending uh, all that time. <laughs> uh, potentially, we could. We could make it happen. You know, we love season four. Um, but yeah, we wanted to, you know, give as much as we can in terms of um, engagement, but also not overly engaged. Cause I think that, um, at some point, like people are, you're going to be tired of doing all these like remote things. And sometimes you just need some time alone or you want to spend some time outside. Um, which actually brings me on to my next point. Work from home tips. So, um, we definitely had, uh, we've definitely created kind of like a work from home guide now by this point for all of our interns and everyone that's kind of come in just because we've had two and a half classes of interns. So hopefully we figured out like the best formula and you know, the best tips. We don't know. We'll see. I guess Mustafa can tell me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, I think the same thing that I said with the virtual interviews part, uh, communicate, right. Whether that's with your teammates on your daily basis, or setting, or setting boundaries, making sure you're budgeting your time and energy. I think that's so important. Um, you know, is letting your letting your team know like what makes the most sense for you, right? Like, um, you know, if you want to be able to hop on a call, like you know, check in like daily, uh, whether that's like 15 minutes, uh, whatever makes the most sense for you. Like, if you're like, you know what, like Monday and Fridays are just like my heads down days. I don't really want to talk to anyone, like communicate with your team and let them know like, Hey, like I want to push all my meetings to this particular day. Like, uh, you know, I, I want to be able to budget my like social energy or, uh, you know, all that just because I think as much as like being in person, um, takes social energy, I feel like being on zoom, you kind of have to do more, uh, even though it's like less, you know what I mean? So, uh, and I think the next thing is again, like I said, take breaks. Like take as many breaks as you can uh, whenever you feel like you're just like, uh, you just can't do it. For example, like I was supposed to have like a one-on-one -on -one with one of my buddies today. And um, I was just like, you know what? Like, uh, oh, also a buddy is like, it's like someone at the company, we call them buddies, but uh, it was supposed to be at like 3.30. And I was like, you know what? Like I, I really would love to just push it to Friday. And everyone's like very like chill about it. I think everyone knows kind of what's happening with the world and the US right now. So I'm sure we're all so much anxiety. So, uh, just trying to figure that out and, um, you know, um, making sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, and as weird as it sounds like take meetings, um, and social time that isn't work related. I think like what Masako was saying, how like, you know, sometimes just like talking about things that aren't work related, like really helps, uh, you know, take your mind off of things like, um, something I've done, uh, for some of our, inter or, or actually all of our interns, we've created spaces for like, just like a standing call, um, for all of our interns, just like hop in if they wanted to talk about like random things. Usually those topics are never related to work. Um, because it just, it just kind of creates, especially because like you've been talking about work the entire day or talking about school, for example, and all of you, uh, like you, the last thing you want to do is do that. So sometimes just being able to take that extra step and do something different, um, really can switch up kind of like your, I guess, like motivation. Um, and then like a few things, uh, a few like tips and tricks that people have been kind of telling, um, have been telling me or, uh, have said that worked really well for them is, uh, one was mimic your commute. So, um, say like you get up, you know, sometimes you usually have this like commute, like say like it's like 9 a.m. You like go to the bus stop. I had someone like they were saying how they get up every day at like 9 a.m., walk to the bus stop and then walk back. And then that's when they start their day. And then when they end their day, they kind of walk back to the bus stop and then kind of come back. So uh, that for them is kind of like a, in their minds, 
kind of budgeting a time and scheduling like, okay, this is my work time. This is what I'm going to do. And then kind of like helps you kind of reset and mimic your, um, your work schedule and your work mind. So you can kind of separate your like personal versus your, uh, your professional. Um, and yeah, and I think the last thing I just want to say was really, uh, really emphasizing this is to care for your mental and emotional health. Uh, you know, whether that's, like I said, get out of the house if possible, like talk to real people in person, like if possible, like if you can talk to your roommates or seeing your family or whatever, like that really does help. Like it really does change things like having that social energy. Um, I definitely like was in like, for example, like for me, I was in an apartment that I wasn't over the summer, uh, that I didn't really know like the roommates and I didn't really hang out with anybody. Uh, and so for me, but then I switched over to an apartment with my, my friends, I ended up moving out. Uh, and that for me was a lot more emotionally healthy, I guess, uh, to be able to have that interaction, to be able to, um, get that social energy because humans are social beings. Um, but yeah, I like whatever steps that you need to take to care for your mental health. Um, I, cannot stress more than that, right? Like whether that's talking to a therapist, um, talking to your family, talking to your friends, um, or taking some time for yourself, like some me time, whether that's like taking a bath and putting on some candles and some like mood music, do that if that helps you, um, or putting on Netflix shows uh, of like trashy TV, like if that helps you, great. Like whatever you can do to take care of yourself, uh, please do so. Um, yeah, and on that note, any questions? <laughs> yeah, I want to know what TV shows you're watching. So, oh my god, I have so many TV shows that I'm on. Okay, so I just finished Steven Universe. Um, I don't know if anybody watches. Uh, Steven Universe is an amazing show. I like it is a cartoon, but I will say it's probably one of the most like uh, I have cried so much from that show. It has got me on emotional roller coasters, uh, and it's probably one of the most like inclusive cartoons I've ever seen in um, in my entire life. So I personally love to see it. Like, um, and then a, a few of things I've been watching: um, Money Heist on Netflix. Um, what else? Uh, I don't remember anymore. But yes, Money Heist was the the most recent that I'm watching right now. <laughs> Thank Mustafa, you. how about you? Any yeah, I, I've been checking out this show, Fargo. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but yeah, it's been really good. Um, I haven't really, I kind of took a break from Netflix for a while, but I, I might start getting back into it um, Thanksgiving time. Uh, Angelina had a question for me, though. She said, um, can I talk about the mentoring and what it's like for interns at Datadog? So yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, so when you start out, Datadog matches you with a mentor on your own team and they're kind of like your onboarding buddy and just like your go-to person to bug all day. Um, and then that's, that was like really helpful in the onboarding process. And then um, they also match you with a buddy, which is someone who just um, like isn't on your team or isn't really oriented with what you do. They're just kind of someone that you kind of meet up with every week and you just kind of talk about what you like or what or how you're feeling um but aside from that there's a lot of just like informal mentorship mentorship where there are a lot of people that are very passionate about their kind of niche and their whatever their projects are whatever their team works on so whenever you message them they're like very happy to just kind of tell you everything they know and just and just feed any questions you have um like just an example um like the guy that actually interviewed me initially for the internship, um, he's not on my team, but because like he kind of knew who I was, he, re he reached out to me and he wanted me to work with him on our hackathon because Datadog hosted like a company-wide hackathon. And then just from that, we got to really know each other well. And then from just from that, we got to continue like this kind of mentor uh, relationship. Um, on top of that, I feel like, like everyone on the team kind of becomes a mentor in some way. And if you just kind of leverage those relationships, you can really benefit. Um, and even the manager, even though you kind of have that relationship where they're assessing your abilities, they're, they're usually someone that's been at Datadog for a long time and they, they can give you very meaningful feedback on certain things that you can improve or what you should learn on. So um, yeah, definitely a lot of avenues for mentorship. Um, yeah, there are lunch, lunch and learns. Um, there's usually one, I think, every other week. 
and any engineer can just kind of volunteer and um it's so cool how like just like there are just so many people that know like a lot about their niche and they could really give an in-depth topic about it um i can give like a really cool example like two weeks ago um a guy was supposed to give a talk about um kind of like optimized search and the guy who gave the the guy who was going to give the talk ended up canceling last minute so some random guy in the zoom meeting was like oh, okay I, I guess i can just give the talk and it turned out he was the guy that wrote the paper that the other guy was going to give the talk on and he just like off the dome just like gave an, an, an like incredible lecture on like how he used to work at google and like they optimize their search engine for something and it was just like so casual for them and that's kind of like the the culture and how like the learning environment is just it's like there there's always someone just like that's like super passionate about some tech and they want to just talk about it so um yeah and they we we archive all our lunch and learns so they're a really great process like later on whenever you want to just learn about certain things so yeah those are really great um I have another question. I was going to type it out, but it's going to take too long. So um, what can you do if you're asked a technical question that you don't necessarily know the answer to or don't know how to approach? So like in the context of the interview, right? Or like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, definitely everyone's been in that situation. I feel like if you don't admit that, you're probably probably lying. Um, in, in those situations, I feel like I I just kind of have to leverage the moment as a learning moment and just kind of really be upfront with like the interviewer and you know with myself and just kind of really communicate on on what I'm thinking at that time and what I think the approach is and hopefully the interviewer is kind enough and and helpful enough that we can walk through it together. Um, but yeah, I've definitely been in situations where, you know, I had those intentions and the, the interviewer did not. And those, those are kind of tough when they're not really getting that, that cause it's like a two way street and if, you know, you're not getting anything back, it's hard to really work from there. But um, usually when they, when they are nice, it's, it's not a big deal if you don't really know immediately. And you can even like work to a point where you actually figure it out. Um, like usually most interview questions, I, I, I kind of start out like, like, what is this? And then, you know, after a few minutes of talking, you're like, oh, okay, I think I know. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it does kind of rely a lot on, a lot on the interviewer and, and their ability to communicate, but you, you should also try to do that as well. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I feel like it's always a two-way street. Like, it's a conversation. I always think, like, I think interviews always have this, like, nerve rackness of like oh no like this is like an audition uh but really really sort of isn't right like it's it's as much as they're interviewing you you're interviewing them as well so you want to ask those questions you want to communicate and you want to uh be able to what like was saying right basically like being able to uh just talk to them like say and be honest right like it's it's you know they're not there to try and like aha you you know what i mean like you didn't know that. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like, they're not trying to do that. Like, they're trying to help you through it. They want to be able to uh, get you to a stage and, you know, um, to, yeah, like, actually just have a conversation, so. Are there any particularly memorable questions oh, interviewees have asked? Masaha, what questions have you asked, I guess, <laughs> that you were, like, yeah. oh, I'm so proud of myself for asking that? <laughs> uh i feel like the best ones are usually when like there's a coincidence and like i just happen to really be passionate about something the interviewer works on or the interviewer mentioned um the ones i kind of i think the most memorable ones uh i don't know it was probably just like like the guy actually um like understood a reference or something on my shirt or something but to be honest like i kind of come with like a default or like a pre-memorized set of questions that i want to ask just you know in the case that there's extra time usually it's 
something along the lines of like a lot of these questions, like what is the mentorship process at the company? Are what is the mobility like? Do, are this, is there a lot of opportunity to explore different things? Um, like, are you what at the company? Are you really excited about um, within the next few years? Um, yeah, stuff like that. I'll, I'll try to think about something memorable. Um, yeah, I think like the ones that usually get a lot of attention are the ones that you can tell come from like a lot of research, right? Like saying like like you've done your research and you have this like very specific thing of like, Oh, uh, I noticed like this, like I was wondering like what, what that's like, or, um, you know, like something that's very specific that clearly shows that they like the candidate has done their research or they're like just curious in general about more so than just like kind of like your blanket questions of like a, what is it like to be an intern or like blah, blah, blah. Like I know that, you know, everyone can ask those questions, but it's, the taking that extra step to being like, okay, like I'm interviewing for this company. So what research can I do? And what questions have I always wanted to ask? Uh, like an interviewer, like specifically on their engineering team, like say like they are, you're asking the interviewer like, Oh, like top, you know, tell me about like what you're currently working on or like, I'm curious to know. And then actually having a dialogue. Um, I think that that's when those conversations become more memorable versus just like a question, answer, question, answer. So And for everyone, sorry for everyone just happy to like oh no wait you can go ahead sorry oh no no i was just saying any other questions so, so go ahead Sama. <laughs> no, i'm gonna say um we i can share my screen really quick just oh, sure. to, um you're good i can share it that way and then feel free everyone to just like send in your questions as they come in feel free to just unmute yourself or just put them in the chat um just we want to Bring up Chloe, do you want to take this over? Yeah, so um, next week we don't have a meeting because it's Veterans Day, but the week after that we're doing like a relaxation kind of night um, just to like de stress from kind of working from home, exams, school, everything. Um, I know that I feel like we all kind of need something like that. Um, yeah. Yep, that's going to be the Monday. Uh, so that's going to be like kind of our coding 404 is like outside of our normal meetings. Um, it's like amazing time to de-stress, um, kind of like Jeffrey just said, it's important to um, take care of yourself when you're working from home. And don't forget, uh, we love your feedback. If you could fill out, um, scan this QR code and fill out this form, that'd be really appreciated. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming to the event. Thank you so much, um, Datadog, Jeffrey Mufasa for coming and talking about like your experiences at Datadog and a bunch of like really helpful tips. For sure. Thank you so much for having us. And hopefully that was useful in some way. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you all soon. I guess hopefully in person sometime. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. I know. Me too. All right. Thank you all so right. much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Right. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you.